Welcome to Live, Behind the Veil, an atmosphere where men and women of God speak His Word to this age and bring His kingdom to this earth. Do you have ears to hear and eyes to see what God is doing in this hour? Let us join our host and the family's conversation as the Holy Spirit is unfolding the Word Behind the Veil. Hi, podcasters. I'm Ron, your host, and today's podcast looks at the basic concern that should be on every Christian's heart. How can I grow in God? What practical steps can I take every day that will help me mature as a Christian? Holy Spirit, we're asking that you would help us open our hearts and be able to hear what you will speak and impart to us today. The principle of being in motion is a huge principle. And I think that's one thing that the enemy uses against Christians, against everybody, is to try to get you to stop and analyze yourself. You know, what's wrong with my heart? Where am I with the Lord? What's going on? What should I do? What's my destiny? Which you never find if you wait and try to figure it out. You only find that when you're doing the will of God, when you're in motion. Then he starts showing you things. I don't even think you can repent, uh, you know, by sitting around and meditating on your navel, trying to figure out true. what's wrong with me. Or I fell down yesterday and now I need to seek the Lord and find out what was wrong with me and why did I fall down and all this stuff. You'll go around that mountain forever and you just die. It's a thing of faith. You get up, you brush yourself off. Okay, Lord, sorry. You know, here I go. I'm going to keep walking with you. And then when you're walking, he starts showing you. You know, he starts, that's the only time I get revelation and I get understanding is when I'm moving. If I'm sitting, trying to figure stuff out, it's a sure sign I'm in trouble. So I want to bring this back real quick, kind of as a question to everybody here. Uh, I'm a kind of a new Christian. Maybe I've been walking with the Lord for a year, and I don't know my destiny. And you guys are talking about getting in motion, and I don't even know what to do. How do I start? How do I find out? I, I want to walk with God. I don't know. You know, I don't know what to do. Do I go out and feed the hungry? Do I read the word all day? What, how do I start to get in motion so that I can hear the, you know, the, the voice of the Lord? I think that's a fair question. I would tell you, as a small child, what did you learn to do? First, you learn to walk. Then you learn to do other things. First, you, you crawled and then you walked. What you're doing in the presence of the Lord, just just call on the name of the Lord. Just ask the Lord to show you himself. Ask the Lord to reveal himself to you. Don't worry about the other things that you don't understand. Put them on a shelf. Put them away from you for right now. Just mm -hmm. reach into knowing the Lord. Reach in and find out who the Lord is and who he is to you and how you're to relate to him. Ask him to make it real to you, just where you're at. That's what I would say to a new Christian. They don't have to worry. You don't have to worry about the other things. Don't worry about your destiny. Just love the Lord. Just worship him. Just talk to him. Just relate to him. And the Lord will show you. Step one step at a time. Take one step at a time. Man, you guys are talking about stuff that I don't understand at all. I mean, what should I expect? Will God speak to me and give me these big revelations and stuff? Or I don't want to miss what the Holy Spirit would speak to me. If it's big or it's small, how, how do I know? The one thing that the Holy Spirit does is he never gives you something huge. It's always small things that build up until it becomes a huge thing. But when you start out, it's just little things. You have your faith. Reading the word, God may speak something to you. Well, maybe you're going to speak something to somebody else. 
maybe you will feed some of them. Maybe you'll be out on the road and you'll see this one guy there and he just looks like, you know, he's <laughs> God's taking him through the mill. And maybe a little bit of food and stuff like that, that will lift his spirits right up to where he has to be to continue on. It's a thing of faith and works. You know, some people say, show me your faith. The only way you can show me your faith is by your works. Not that your works are anything, but you're, li- you're reaching in to minister. And it's just little things. You didn't feed me. You didn't clothe me. You didn't visit me. These are little things. These are not huge things that you have to do. No, it was just the fact of relating to somebody and in their need. Read the life of Christ in the Gospels, and every time it mentions it is written of me, go back to Isaiah, Jeremiah, the Psalms. In the Old Testament, Jesus studied the Torah, which is to us what we call the Old Testament today. He found out who he was by reading those scriptures. He knew John the Baptist was going to baptize him. He knew he was going to die on the cross. He knew people were going to be saved because of him. He knew people would be healed because of him. And finding out how to hear the word of the Lord is is crucial in that you have to read with an anticipation and an expectation that the Holy Spirit is going to speak to you and show you what the scriptures are saying. Because we all know John 3.16. Everybody knows John 3.16. But you can read that and you can read it to prove a point. But when the Holy Spirit makes it real to you 10 years ago and then makes it real to you today, it has a different meaning to it. It's not necessarily as it is written. The Holy Spirit is the one who will give direction. He's the one who will show you. He's the one that he was sent to remind us what Jesus was saying, what Jesus talked about. It's his job to do that. But the interesting thing with the scripture is you can read it a thousand times and have a thousand different interpretations based on what you're reading. We know, I know there are 70 different ways to read the scriptures. You can read it to prove a point, which only creates arguments. You can read it in a numerical version and boy, that gets intense. Um, There's a lot of ways, but ask the Holy Spirit. If you ask him, even if you don't believe in him first, you just keep asking him, he will start to show you. And then when he shows you something, ask him to get confirmation and or what does it mean to me? You know, you're talking about an early Christian. You know, if you want to learn the voice of the Lord, ask him. Ask him to speak to you. Ask him this or that, you know. When you're driving down the road or the freeway or wherever and you hear this still small voice say, take this off ramp, and you pay attention to it, maybe it's the Lord, maybe not. If it's not, you just might have added a couple minutes to your trip. But the thing is, is if it was the Holy Spirit or the Lord telling you to take that off ramp, Maybe there's a purpose. Maybe there's an accident getting ready to happen up ahead of you, and he's trying to keep you from that scenario. Maybe something simple, or maybe something complex like that. We don't know. We know that if we listen and take those little steps that he says, eventually he speaks more and more clearly, and we start to be more attuned to what he's saying and how he's saying it. And we get to recognize his voice. Most of the time you hear the Lord's voice and it's like, uh, that's just my own head speaking, you know. Maybe, maybe not. But if you don't act on it, you won't find out. You know, you've been reading the scriptures now probably for a year. And all of a sudden you go back and don't expect to find what you found before. Because God is a God that's moving on. 
And the scripture that you may have read a year ago, because you have grown in the Lord, now the Lord's going to reveal something a little bit deeper to you. Each time you read the scriptures, read it anew and let him speak to you. I know there is one thing that we all have in common, and I think this may be part of what you're asking, Ron, is what experience are you rooted and grounded in? What was your first experience? You may have had it and don't know it, or maybe you're still hearing a voice calling you, and many people have been in an organized group, whether it be church or a fellowship meeting or, or whatever, have done what they call answer an altar call. And there's a lot of people that have a relationship with the Lord that didn't meet him that way. But there is an initial experience that you will never forget. If you had some experience and a little bit of this and a little bit of that, I'd say, like Alan is saying, seek him, pester him, whatever it takes, till he speaks to you, and you know without a doubt that he is saying, come follow me. Because what you're launching is the, right. uh, the first of an uncountable number of experiences with him. A walk with God is put together of one experience after another all through our lives. And I don't care if your experience was last Friday night. I don't care if it was at a Shabbat in a synagogue. I don't care if it was at the racetrack. God speaks to you. Listen and keep listening, yeah. but also yeah. keep asking. Yes. Keep asking, tell me more. Yeah. And there is nothing wrong yeah. with yesterday being your first experience. Mm -hmm. Because the experience that I'm having today and the one I'm going to ha have tomorrow is similar or even the same as your experience because it's God speaking. He's giving you himself if you'll give yourself to him. And that's a beginning, and that's actually, the, in a way, a walk with God is very simple. The rules don't really change. You just keep doing them. The cry of my heart is, I can hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. As this podcast goes out, I loose you. I loose you into that first experience or I loose you into that experience today and tomorrow. Just that hunger, it's, it's a drive. Sometimes you don't even know what you're driven to, you know. You're just, you just know that your life is not <laughs> worth living the way it is. And you don't see any real future, which is a good thing, because there is no real future out there. The tantalizing thing of the world is exactly that. It's a deception and futility. And I would speak to young people, especially, that are starting out in life. I just bless you not to bite on the hook of the world. And I know that it's tantalizing, and I know that it looks good and all that. There's nothing out there that's worth. They're just not anything out there. Take it for what it's worth. <laughs> you can call us all fuddy-duddies, but the truth is there's a lot of perception and wisdom here that has been beat into us. Yeah. So it's not like we never were young. We weren't tantalized or drawn in, mm -hmm. but God's work did a work in us. And there's, there is uh, a perception and revelation that we've come to, and we would love to impart, would love to draw you in, even if you just kind of look at us and 
just listen because you're annoyed with us. That's okay. Be annoyed, you know, <laughs> but listen, you know, and then, you know, ask the Lord, talk to him, you know, even just go somewhere that nobody can see you so they can't call you crazy. And then just talk to him and ask him out loud, yeah. you know, are these guys out of their mind or what, mm -hmm. you know, and he'll speak to you if you're serious. I mean, you have to be serious, but if you're serious and you don't want your life to go down the normal path that billions of people's lives yep. have went down, which is just futility, and you really have a heart that wants something different and be something different in this earth, because there's a tremendous thing God's bringing forth. It's yeah. You can't put it in words. It's beyond what we could ask or think. Anyway, it's kind of, this is a little bit different podcast, but you know what? It just feels right. It's just a reaching out to people. You know, it, it hit something when you mentioned the heart. God knows the intent of the heart. And if your intention is honest and you want to know, he knows that. But if you approach him, yeah. you don't believe in him, you're just taking a challenge and you're just going to take it on a natural he he sees that he he's not going to respond you know the first step we must believe that he is once we believe that he is with our heart we don't see him we've never heard him speak to us until now as far as we know it doesn't matter the moment you believe that he is then he will find a way to be real to you one thing that really accompanies that is a hunger. Imagine that you haven't eaten lunch, or better yet, haven't eaten for a week. How hungry are you to know Him? Experiencing the impartation of God's Word through His family is life. Has this time in His presence blessed you? Then please subscribe to our podcast at livebehindtheveil.com. If you would like to contact the family with questions or topics that you would like discussed, you can email them to livingepistles at livebehindtheveil.com. Stay connected, tuned in, and grow with the family as the Lord unveils His Word to us live behind the veil.